Hi, here we are again. In this video, I'd like to show you a depth cube. We have seen depth cubes earlier, so it's nothing new to you. It's um, basically an experiment where we get carbon 13 data, and uh, it has almost completely substituted the classic carbon 13 spectroscopy because it's so much faster and it gives you even more information than just the carbon-13. Carbon-13 is relying just on the presence of the carbon-13 isotope, which is NMR active, and we all know there's only 1% of all the carbons, while the proton is always NMR active. So it's an ind indirect experiment, so basically we get information from magnetization of the protons that are connected to carbon atoms, and this gives us then information about the presence of the carbon. What we see here is an ordinary carbon-13 scale, so it's quite okay, but we see that our peaks are sometimes going up and sometimes down. This is primarily down to the facing and it depends on the substitution pattern. So CH3 groups and CH groups go normally in one direction while CH2 groups are going into the other direction. The quaternary atoms are also visible here, so this is why it's a depth cube. This is possibly why we get magnetization over from connecting protons, so protons that are a little bit further away, so that works. However, the magnetization transfer is not very big, so usually those peaks are fairly small. So with this up and down, I would be always a bit careful because it uh, depends on settings of instrument. Let's have a, have a look what we can do here. First of all, we need to set the reference. The NMR spectrum has been run in chloroform, so in deuterated chloroform, so we see the residual chloroform peak here. So I press the letter Z, so I can zoom in my signal here. I need the middle peak, so I press the letter L for setting the reference. So I have to select the correct solvent, so it should be chloroform. Here it is. Say OK and my spectrum should be now calibrated or referenced to the correct solvent. I could also have used TMS, but that's not in this, not for this experiment. So I look at the full spectrum, and now the next thing I can do is to do the peak picking. So I press the letter K, and now you can see that I actually can get both sides here, so everything is a bit small. So what I have to do, I go into the properties again, look for peaks and the font, set this one to 10, so then I can see it and we want to have only one decimal in the carbon 13 spectrum, so that gives us all our peaks. But if you look here, you see only the positive peaks have been picked. We don't see anything here for the negative one, what to do here. So for this purpose we do a right mouse click and go for peak picking and go for the options. Here you can select what you can see. You see at the moment only the positives are selected, so we want to display both the positive and the negative ones, and then say OK. So if you do the peak picking once again, checking that the threshold is right, now you can see that you see also the peaks that are going down. So which information can we gather from this spectrum here? We know that we have one carbonyl, so that is likely to be this signal, so that's one of the quaternary ones. Then these peaks are all in the area where we expect the aromatic signals to come, and here we can clearly say that these ones must be the quaternary because they are so small. We can't, however, say which one is which from this spectrum here. What else we can see? These peaks up here, these must belong to those carbons, which are substituted by a CH group. Then we have one signal that is going down here. This one must be the CH2 group. So in this case, the CH2 groups are going down, so it's possibly this signal. Then we have two CH groups. They are possibly those two. Again, we can't say who is who, just by looking at those. We possibly could calculate a bit the shift, but that is a bit hard work. We don't want to do this. And then we have our three remaining methyl groups, and possibly this bigger one, but it's only possible, we can't be 100% sure, is referring to those two methyl groups. 
and this one is the methyl group over here. Again, remember we can't integrate carbon-13 data.